The difference between good players and great players is mental strength. There are many players with good shots, but there are not that many that have good shots and great mental strength. The ability to deal with pressure and play your best tennis when you most need it is something that many players cannot achieve throughout their whole career. But of course, mental strength can be worked. And in this video, we have possibly the greatest mind in the history of the game, Novak Djokovic, who in some interviews has spoken about his development in that mental part of the game. What are his mind tricks in those clutch moments to play his best tennis when he needs it the most? And the importance of believing in yourself even if things are not going your way. All of this we're gonna see in this video, so make sure that if you enjoy it or extract value out of it, you hit the like button which helps with the channel a lot. If you would like to enjoy more tennis videos of this style, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I'm pretty sure we're gonna reach 50,000 subscribers today, so a massive thank you to every single one of you. And now, let's get right into the video. I think it all starts even before you get out on the court. You know, what you do to get yourself mentally prepared for the match, for you know, to get yourself in the right state of mind where you are, you know, calm, composed, serene enough, but yet you have the right intensity and the drive and motivation to, to play well and, and, and be dynamic and fast on the courts. Well, I can only speak on my own behalf. Obviously, we spoke about uh, power of, you know, visualization and, and, and preparing yourself for possible scenarios. And I obviously try to play the match in my mind before I go on, on the court. Uh, and I, you know, always try to imagine myself as a winner. I think there is a power to that, and um, but also there there has to be next to the willpower, uh, you know, uh, strength that comes not just from your physical self, but from your your mental and emotional self, and and it's I I think it's well for me at least it's a constant battle within, you know, more than uh, than than what happens outside. Uh, it's it's really not the situations that you. Um, experience that are affecting you, but how you internally experience those situations, how you accept them, how you live through them. So, you know, I, I just told myself before the match, I'm, I'm, you know, gonna try to switch off as much as I can from what is happening around us, and and just be be there, be present. Um, and you know, there's not a specific formula to find the courage. I mean, at least in, from from my perspective, you you know. You can go all out and just, you know, cl close your eyes and just hit the best ball as hard as you can, and then you can call that courage. But I, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it courage in in some particular situation. So, you need to be consistently, uh, sorry, constantly playing well throughout five hours if you want to win the match like this. So, you know, I guess there is an endurance part, and and but you know, I think there's always this self belief and 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 you have to keep reminding yourself that, that you are there for a reason and that you are better than the other guy. And as, as hard as the moment, you know, is that you are in, you know, the more you have to remind yourself, the more you have to talk to yourself. I mean, that's, you know, that's at least in, in my case. I wanted to talk to you about uh, clutch moments. When you're in those situations, how do you avoid distractions? Uh, consciously breathing first. That's that's probably the, the simplest thing that you could do, but probably the most effective. I think the experience of being in this particular situation so many times before in my career helps me every next time that I have to face the adversity and face the distractions and you know my thoughts and what ifs and fears and and so forth. I think everyone goes through that thought process. It's just, um, and and I don't think it's particularly bad. I was thinking it's it's bad, so I was trying to um, ignore it or I was trying to shut it down. But I think the major transformation in a positive way for me started when I was starting to acknowledge it and 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 accept it as as part of me. It's 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 there. My ego is there. My fears are there. Everything is there. It's present, but then how will I address it in a way that is going to help me to overcome that, to transform it into positive fuel that is going to help me overcome the clutch moments that you talked about, um, 
just feel happy and joyful and present on the court and get the best out of that experience. How, how do you do it? Well, I, I, I practice a lot of mindfulness. Um, so, you know, meditation, you know, journaling, talking with my team, with my parents, with my wife, with, with everybody who is around me, trying to address certain, um, with my, of course, uh, life coaches that I have, um, spiritual guides and that I have as well that help me um, address certain emotional, you know, uh, issues or traumas or whatever it is that, that, that uh, tend to appear on the court. So when it appears on a break point, when I'm facing a match point or break point or, you know, clutch moments, uh, they do tend to surface, but they are, they, uh, I, I, ma I manage to, to, to gain the control over them much quicker and I manage to, to impose my positive affirmation and positive feeling. Uh, or if that doesn't happen, then I just try to be, uh, conscious that I have to accept that moment that that's going to happen, but I focus on my breathing and I focus on being in the moment and, and what needs to be done next moment, which is playing the right shot, positioning myself well on the court, and just focusing on executing the point right. It just takes uh, years of uh, devoted practice mentally, not just physically, uh, and you have to do it. You can't expect others to really um, fix your emotional or mental issues. They can um, encourage you and they can empower you. Um, and they can understand you and they can give you tools, but you have to use those tools and do it the right way. That in those moments of when you're facing adversity and when you're challenged, um, you should always look inside because that's where the answer lies. I did not understand that fully. I heard that before, but I think when I went through this journey, I understood really what that, what that means. And now I know where I can always find strength um, and belief and motivation to, to get me going. Thank you very much for this wonderful evening. Thank you very much, Maurice. I appreciate it.